Hi guys, welcome back. Um, as promised from the stripped down video, we're going to be looking more into the component section now. Uh, this one we're going to be looking at crankshafts, connecting rods, pistons, kind of the rotating system. Um, first off, we'll start with the crankshaft. All this essentially is designed to do is turn reciprocating motion, so the up and down of the piston into rotational motion, which obviously goes through the clutch um, flywheel into the gearbox. What you can see here is you've got multiple different what they call journal points. You have these four here which are all perfectly aligned. They are the main journals and what these do is these are the ones where they bolt into the block and act as basically the rotational point, the center line of it as it spins. It will spin around this point. Um, these external ones, these outer ones, they are the big end journals. These are the ones where the pistons will actually attach to, through this point here. And these are essentially what are pushed down and then push the piston back up again as the piston goes through its four stroke motion. Um, on these sides, you can see the counterbalance weights. The whole point of these is, as it says in the name, is to counterbalance the forces produced by this kind of off center point and also the mass of the piston and conrod joined. This is to stop kind of imbalances and harshness and to prevent the crankshaft from breaking and uh, fracturing at any point. Um, a bit more into detail, you have these, what they call fillet cuts. These are points where it's not supposed to be perfectly sharp and 90 degree angles because what would happen there is that would create a fracture weak point, uh, which we don't want when you've got such forces on them. So they will slightly either add a step in there or they'll add little chamfers into them to reduce that angle and reduce the fracture risk. Uh, this side is where it would mount up to the flywheel. Flywheel sits directly onto here and the bolts go through here. This is where that rear main seal sits um, so you'll note from when we took it apart that this sits flush with the outside of the block from there on out. This side is the timing side. So what you'll have on this side is you'll have your, your camshaft chain sprocket and your oil pump sprockets as well. This section here directly drives those two units. This piece here is for the balance shaft. It's Instead of having a chain for it, with some of the other later generations, they have these gears where the balance shaft sprocket directly mounts onto it, and so it perfectly aligns with each other and balances it out. There's a few holes in here. That is to kind of alter the weight of each of the, the balance shafts, because as they cast them, they're not always perfect. They may be have certain kind of thickness issues or uh, things like that so they'll drill holes out of bits to kind of equal out that that mass and bring the weight down to perfectly balance it off some will have two some won't have any and then you've got ones around here which just have the one these holes here i've got obvious there for lubrication purposes this is the oil feed so on the mains, the oil will come through the block, through the bearing, lubricate this journal, and then also through into the actual crankshaft itself, where it will then be guided through, at usually a diagonal point, through the, uh, the crankshaft, and then come out of here. That is then to obviously get lubrication out to those points which are not directly connected to the block in any way. So we're going to move on to pistons. I've cleaned one of them up a little bit with a bit of a scouring pad so you can see what it looks like. This is what it looked like before because of all the oil residue on it. The whole point of the piston is to act as the point where the pressure sits and pushes down, which then rotates the crankshaft. It's got side skirts down here which help try and keep it true and also are what help lubrication down the block. 
piston rings, you often you'll get three. You'll get the top compression ring, which takes most of the work of sealing the combustion chamber to ensure that the gases don't escape past it. So all of the energy that's produced in the combustion process will force the piston down rather than just leak by into the crankcase. The second one down is another compression ring and it does a very similar job, it just tries to catch any of the bypass from the combustion chamber going past it again. And then the third and final one is what they call an oil scraper ring. It does what it says on the, in the name really. It, all the oil gets sprayed up into the bottom underneath here to help lubricate it so it doesn't wear away on the piston rings and the block. And what that does is to stop too much oil getting up into the combustion chamber. It will actually scrape most of the oil down and back into the engine block. Moving on down, we have the connecting rod. This is what essentially transfers the force from the piston, the combustion chamber and piston, onto the crankshaft. It's got two, uh, two areas of movement in them. One is directly fitted into the assembly here and one is when conjoined with the crankshaft. This is what they call the small end and this is what you call the big end. This, the big end, will have two separate pieces. That is to essentially be able to kind of clamp it around the crankshaft. <clears throat> Otherwise you would never be able to get it around and it would be a bit awkward. They always have, if I can get these off quickly. Inside they have bearings. These are called white metal or soft metal bearings. And what they essentially have is usually a steel or iron backing. And then inside they'll have a soft metal. Used to be lead, um, sometimes you get sputter bearings these days. And that is essentially a sacrificial layer. Although the connecting rod bearing should never really touch the actual crankshaft because of the film of oil that's created in between the barrier layer, these are, in case there is any contact, that will take the force and will wear away or become damaged as opposed to damaging the actual crankshaft, which is far more expensive and can cause warping of the crankshaft and scoring of the crankshaft, which would need replacing, or if it's not too bad, then it would need re-honing re around the, uh, the journal, regrinding. So we fit that back in. As you can see, as I said before, this is where the oil that layer come, come through and help lubricate. The, the oil will come up through here, into here, and help cool this as well. So there is a slight cooling aspect to this. This end, the small end, uh, there's essentially a pin quite a thick dowel that goes through and then it has two little circlip rings on both sides to stop it falling out of the piston either side. The connecting rod then sits inside the piston and will basically rotate around that point. That is as the, piston, the connecting rod rotates around the, the connecting rod will rotate along with it and you want the piston to stay perfectly upright and not to be kind of doing that as the crankshaft spins around because that would virtually damage, kind of destroy your engine, break the pistons, break the engine block, would render the engine utterly useless. So it gives you that ability to move it around. These pistons and con rods are more than likely to be forged. Uh, no cast, sorry, which is much cheaper, much easier to mass produce, but nowhere near as strong. They do the job for low powered engines such as this at 55 horsepower, but as soon as you start putting kind of boost, turbo boost, superchargers, or high revving, high performance engines, you start wanting to go towards the forged, which the difference is with cast, they heat up the metal till it's molten, pour it into a mold, and then allow it to cool. 
has forged it a block of metal that they will compress into a shape and the act of compression will actually align the molecules and atoms within the structure which will increase the strength of it and the durability. Often the expansion rate is different as well. Forged will increase more than cast. So cast will often have a better fit in the first place when cold because it won't expand too much and then catch on the sides of the, the block. Whereas forged it will expand a lot more so they start off with a bigger clearance in there to give room for the expansion and growth. With piston rings you can see that there are some gaps in them. That is the whole purpose of the gap is to once again take into account expansion not just of the piston but obviously the piston ring as well as it heats up it will grow and that gap will shrink and if you had a solid ring that would then just force right up against the block as it's going up and down with the heat that is produced inside an internal combustion engine and that would then either seize the engine up altogether break the piston off the crown of the piston off snap piston rings um, and score the bore to an extreme level. So that's pretty much kind of all the basics that you'd need to know around this sort of thing. Uh, if you'd like to know more detail about all these things put some comments down below and I will do a more in-depth video if, if you'd like it. Um, please like and subscribe to the channel and the next one will be of the cylinder head where we will be stripping it down having a look at all the components and then putting it all back together again. Thank you.